the magicians, the shadows of life. What brings you to the land of the dead? asked Wharton as the king of the Grim Reapers to his son. Have a reaper, called the necromancer. Don't be dramatic. It's just the morgue, said the necromancer. His son, did you come to visit your victims? said Mortimer. He was in human form, like the necromancer. No, I came because I needed your help, Dad, said the necromancer. Mortimer pushed up his glasses, which went slipping down his perfect nose. Then Mortimer put his hands on his perfectly clean lab coat on his perfect hips, looking curiously and defiantly at his son, ready to rebuff the sharp jab he expected from his son. What do you want? said Mortimer's light tenor voice coldly. Christine has been given her first mission by fate, said the necromancer. Who does she have to kill? said Mortimer sadly. A friend of hers. I killed a homeless man, said the necromancer. A friend of hers. Fate is cruel. With his vengeance. Why couldn't he get you to kill them? You don't know them, said Mortimer. I know, I asked him if I could do the job, but he got all stubborn. He said she has to learn to kill anyone, so she must be the one to kill her friend, said the necromancer. Sounds like that madman, said Mortimer, frowning, looking more handsome. Yes, said the necromancer. Why did you come here to boast? I have work to do here, said Mortimer, who was the coroner. There. Oh, she needs the talk, said the necromancer. Couldn't you give her the talk? said Mortimer. I tried to, but she doesn't respect me, said the necromancer. And you think she respects me? said Mortimer, sceptically. No, she needs to hear it from someone other than just me, said the necromancer. Oh, okay, said Mortimer. I'll visit her later. Held a bony hand on her back. It's all right, Chrissy, said the owner with the hand, his voice, her grandfather. Hi, Grandad. Christine said, turning around to face him. She saw a grim reaper. She didn't shudder. It was a natural sight to her. What's wrong, Chrissy? asked Mortimer. Argent wants me to kill my best friend Petra, said Christine, through her tears. Argent is cruel. But one day you will have my job. You have to learn to do as he says, and act without pity or favour. You must take your friends and family to the afterlife as a reaper. You are a reaper too. We learn to do our bitter duty slowly. It starts with a single kill. I know it's hard killing a friend, said the reaper, putting, putting down his scythe on a table, embracing me and comforting her. Christine? There you are. 
Why are we here? I can imagine seeing Zero kill the necromancer. Hanging around here, said Petra Kelly, Christine's friend. They were in an abandoned street that night. Who's your friend? Petra asked, seeing the nervous looking young man beside Christine. He's not my friend, he's my dad, said Christine nervously. You've got to be kidding me. He is as old as we are, said Petra, thinking the necromancer was cute. Christine read her mind and felt awkward. Come on, Chris, urged her father. I don't want to, said Christine. It's your duty, said her father. Christine looked at Petra, who looked back confused. She turned to her father. Oh, I don't want to do it, said Christine. It's our purpose, said the necromancer. What is your purpose? asked Petra, confused. I'm sorry, said Christine, as she crushed the windpipe of Petra, feeling her only releasing her when she was dead, when she saw her grandfather in reaper form as he came to collect the soul of the dead woman. Christine hugged her dad. As she cried angry with herself for killing her friend. I feel like I'm broken, said Christine sadly. The necromancer replied, It's all right. We're all broken. That's how the light gets in. To his crying daughter, who saw herself as an evil monster for what she had done.